Tim Horowitz is a diligent medical student who is occasionally doing extra night shifts in the intensive care unit of the university hospital. Unfortunately, a few days ago, Tim caught a severe cold and started to feel pretty bad. He is much weaker than usual, feels breathless after walking short distances, and also feels a little feverish. Tim is breathing rapidly and still does not get enough air. His strength fades away. He is about to faint and feebly calls out for help. Someone call 911. Please tell me what happened. Mr. Horvitz is a 24-year-old male patient who has been found in unstable condition on the stand of a football field with dyspnea, coughing, confusion, and sweating. Mr. Horovitz reported fever, shivering, and purulent sputum for the past two days. His current body temperature is 40.5 degrees Celsius. Bilateral coarse crackling can be heard over the basal lung areas during auscultation. Vital signs are significant for hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and an oxygen saturation of only 89%. Leukocytes and C-reactive protein are elevated. Chest X-ray shows bilateral infiltrates. We've started supplemental oxygen therapy. I suspect he suffers from pneumonia, maybe even acute respiratory distress syndrome. We've had a couple of severe pneumonia cases recently. Indeed, Mr. Horvitz is in a very severe situation. He's deteriorating as we speak. We need to provide respiratory support and please prepare for immediate intubation. Please transfer him to the ICU and start calculated antibiotic therapy. Hey Anne, can you tell me the possible causes of ARDS? Do you actually know how ARDS was defined nearly 25 years ago? Anne remembers her professor speaking about ARDS causes. After watching this teaching lecture, you will be able to diagnose ARDS using historic and current definitions, explain the so-called Berlin definition of ARDS, differentiate between pulmonary and extrapulmonary causes of ARDS, understand the clinical presentation of ARDS, and initiate adequate treatment strategies in patients suffering from ARDS. Well, indeed, ARDS can ensue from many different causes. There are various etiologies of ARDS, but definitely pneumonia is the number one cause worldwide. Other causes that affect the lung directly include, for example, thoracic injuries like blunt chest trauma. And it has probably been known since World War I, if not longer. And we learned that also non-thoracic injuries in patients with multiple trauma can cause ARDS. So in these cases, ARDS may be related to massive blood transfusions, systemic inflammation or sepsis, just to name a few. Even pancreatitis is a known cause of ARDS. So we call these extrapulmonary causes that are responsible for the development of diffuse lung infiltrates, respiratory distress and respiratory failure. And sometimes this happens within only a few hours or days. Back in 1967, Dr. Ashbow and colleagues introduced the term ARDS, at that time for the adult respiratory distress syndrome. In the following 25 years, many attempts were made to better define this syndrome, but a broad consensus for a single definition has probably not been achieved until 1994, when the American-European Consensus Conference, the AECC, published a globally accepted definition for the syndrome, which now they named the Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, because it can occur in both adults and children. But the definition also raised some concern. The AECC definition required an acute onset of respiratory distress, but the time frame for this acute onset remained elusive. The definition included a certain degree of hypoxemia, defined by the ratio of arterial oxygen tension and inspired fraction of oxygen, the PaO2-FiO2 ratio. However, this ratio can vary largely depending on the ventilator settings that are being used. 
The definition included X-ray diagnosis of lung infiltrates, a diagnostic tool with limited reliability from one rater to another. The definition also required pulmonary wedge pressures of below 18 centimeters of water, but measuring wedge pressures requires sophisticated technical equipment, so the insertion of a pulmonary artery catheter may not be available in a number of ICUs. Some of these concerns were addressed by the Berlin definition. That was in 2011 when a panel meeting of the ARDS definition task force was arranged in Berlin. So that task force reviewed available data, clinical and experimental, uh, in an effort to address some of the limitations of the AECC definition and to forge a new and better definition of ARDS. As a result, the so-called Berlin definition of ARDS was published in 2012. It is endorsed by critical care societies across the globe. And this is how we define ARDS today. The panel agreed that ARDS is a type of acute, diffuse inflammatory lung injury leading to increased pulmonary vascular permeability, increased lung weight, and loss of aerated lung tissue. The clinical hallmarks are hypoxemia and bilateral radiographic opacities associated with increased venous admixture, increased physiological dead space, and decreased lung compliance. In order to memorize the details of the Berlin definition of ARDS, imagine an office room with an open window, a calendar on the wall, a lung-shaped tree, and a watering can on an office desk, as well as a piano. The Berlin definition is defined by five major criteria that are timing, chest imaging, origin of the edema, oxygenation, and ARDS severity. The calendar represents the timing criteria. The onset of ARDS is defined as within one week of a known clinical insult or new or worsening respiratory symptoms. The chest imaging and origin of edema are represented by the plant and the watering can. Bilateral opacities indicating pulmonary edema on chest radiograph, or CT, are defining criteria of ARDS. Imagine oxygen flowing through the open window into the office room. This represents the oxygenation criteria of the Berlin definition. ARDS is defined by a PaO2 to FiO2 ratio of less than 300 millimeters of mercury with a minimum positive end expiratory pressure of at least five centimeters of water. The term acute lung injury from the AECC definition was removed from the Berlin definition. Finally, let's take a look at the piano in the room. The ARDS severity is categorized by the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio, which is also known as the Horowitz index. Three ARDS severity categories were defined based on patients' PaO2 to FiO2 ratio. Mild ARDS is defined by a P to F ratio of 200 to 300 millimeters mercury. Moderate ARDS is defined by a P to F ratio of 100 to 200 millimeters of mercury. Severe ARDS is defined by a P to F ratio of less than 100 millimeters mercury. The treatment of ARDS patients includes treating the underlying condition, like pneumonia or pancreatitis. The cornerstones of ARDS therapy are lung protective ventilation with low tidal volumes, prone positioning, and the administration of new muscular blocking agents. Additional therapies such as the inhalation of nitric oxide, early enteral nutrition and fluid management play a very important role. The goal of mechanical ventilation is to preserve adequate oxygenation, decarboxylation on the one hand and to reduce oxygen toxicity as well as ventilator-induced lung injury on the other hand. When talking about lung protective ventilation, we have to talk about the fraction of inspired oxygen as well as the level of PEEP. Both have to be titrated 
to reach a sufficient oxygenation of the patient. Uh, in most cases, at least 90% should be reached, but it can differ in special circumstances. Lung protective ventilation with low tidal volumes, and that means 6 milliliter per kilogram predicted body weight or even less, have uh, shown to reduce mortality of ADS patients. It is important to limit plateau pressures to 30 centimeters of water at the same time. Prone position of the patient may rapidly improve oxygenation by recruitment of additional lung zones and may allow for the reduction of inspired fraction of oxygen. Prone position has also been shown to reduce the mortality of ADS patients. The administration of neuromuscular blocking agents can be used in the early phase of ADS um, to further reduce mortality of the patients. This is possibly because of um, a reduction of asynchrony between the ventilator and the patient, which is an important stress factor for the lung and causes uh, additional shear forces in the alveoli. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation is a rescue therapy that can be considered in selected patients. Um, who suffer prolonged refractory hypoxemia and do not reach adequate oxygenation with mechanical ventilation alone, despite low tidal volume ventilation, prone positioning, and the administration of neuromuscular blocker. Sometimes protective ventilation is only possible after an ECMO is inserted. Tim has been intubated and transferred from the emergency department to the ICU. He has developed moderate ARDS with a PaO2 to FiO2 ratio of 160 millimeters mercury that was caused by a bacterial pneumonia. With calculated antibiotic therapy, lung protective ventilation, as well as two extended sessions of prone positioning, his pulmonary gas exchange function has improved quickly. He was extubated on day six after admission and was managed with non-invasive respiratory support for the rest of the ICU stay. Tim was transferred to rehabilitation and finally made it home a few weeks later. In conclusion, please remember the following five take-home messages. One, ARDS is an acute and potentially life-threatening deterioration of pulmonary function with impaired gas exchange. Two, the Berlin definition of ARDS includes three stages of disease severity, which are mild, moderate, and severe ARDS. Three, ARDS is most frequently caused by pneumonia, but extrapulmonary conditions may also cause ARDS. Four, apart from treatment of the underlying conditions, ARDS requires a multimodal treatment strategy. This includes lung protective ventilation, prone positioning, administration of muscle relaxants in early stages, as well as supportive strategies. In the most severe cases, extracorporeal lung assistance, such as ECMO, needs to be installed as part of a rescue therapy strategy. Five, using these multimodal treatment strategies, the high mortality of ARDS of around 40% has gradually decreased over the past years for patients treated in specialized centers. Patients with moderate or severe ARDS should ideally be transferred to such referral centers of excellence. ARDS is indeed a disease condition that requires a multimodal treatment strategy to provide the best quality of evidence-based care to our patients. Not all patients require all treatment strategies and all components of the strategy. So judging which patient benefits from which strategy the most can be quite challenging. Most importantly, ARDS treatment is a team effort. So it needs a team of nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, physiotherapists, and other healthcare workers who work in concert to make more people survive. Combining scientific evidence and clinical experience, your team can really make a difference.